When you want to perform two or more tasks at the same time, you typically cannot pay full attention to both. Therefore, you need to switch between the two tasks. An interesting question is what influences people to switch between tasks? Knowing this is important for various reasons. For example, it can help in the design of technology and training to keep people focused on the most important tasks. In this work, we further investigated when people switch between two tasks. We use the term interleaving, as in our setup, people go back and forth between working on one task and working on another task in sequence. Previous scientists have found that people tend to interleave tasks at so-called natural breakpoints. The idea is that many tasks can be decomposed into smaller subtasks. For example, Typing a manuscript can be decomposed into typing chapters, which can be decomposed into typing paragraphs, which can be decomposed into typing sentences, words, and letters. Larger components in a task structure, such as finishing a chapter or a paragraph, form natural breakpoints, at which it is more natural to interleave one task for another task. One reason is that if you interleave at these natural breakpoints, there is less to remember about that task, which clears your memory and reduces stress. One domain in which interleaving at natural breakpoints has been studied a lot is in manually typing digits while also steering a vehicle. A phone number typically consists of multiple subsets of digits. Completing such a subset or chunk forms a natural breakpoint to interleave tasks. Previous work showed that when people drive a driving simulator and manually type a phone number, they tend to interleave dialing for driving at these natural breakpoints. That is, they type one chunk of digits, then drive, then type the next chunk, then drive, and so on until the number is typed. But what do people do when this chunk of digits is long, and waiting for the natural breakpoint might be dangerous? In our study, participants had to dial a phone number that had 11 digits, which were clustered in one group of 5 digits and one group of 6 digits. At the same time, participants also had to steer a simulated vehicle such that it stayed in the middle of the road. The participants always had to do both tasks, but were given a priority to focus either mostly on driving as safe as possible, or to focus on dialing the number as fast as possible. The questions we asked them were, how do people interleave dialing for steering under these two priorities, and how efficient is it to do this in this way? There are many ways in which dialing and steering can be interleaved in this scenario. In order to understand human performance, it is good to consider it in the context of these other interleaving strategies. We used computer simulation models to predict performance of such strategies. In this plot we will illustrate performance. On the horizontal axis we plot the total dialing time, with shorter dialing times on the left. On the vertical axis we plot driving performance, with better driving performance towards the bottom of the graph. What does performance of various strategies then look like? One extreme strategy is to type all the digits in one group without paying any attention to the road. This will lead to fast dialing, but comes at the cost of bad driving performance. On the other extreme, one can dial one digit, then steer for a while, dial one digit, steer for a while, dial another digit, steer for a while, and on and on and on. Driving performance will be a lot better with this strategy compared to the previous one. However, dialing will take a lot longer. In between these extremes are various other strategies in which digits are dialed in groups. The exact strategy depends both on how many digits are dialed in one group, but also on how much time is dedicated to steering in between. This cloud of points illustrates what the range of performance in this task setup might look like. Of particular interest are the points highlighted in orange. These points form a trade-off curve. Given a criterion for one of the tasks, the orange point predicts what the best performance on the other task is given this criterion. The entire collection of points illustrate different trade-offs that one can make. Interestingly, in our studies participants' performance was near this trade-off curve. One way to interpret this is that in the context of all the ways in which people could divide their time between tasks, they did it quite efficiently. The exact strategy depended on their priorities. When we asked participants to prioritize fast dialing, they applied more reckless strategies. However, when we asked them to prioritize the driving task, their steering performance was a lot better. Surprisingly though, steering performance was not the best possible. Rather, participants seem to trade off the performance on the driving task with the performance on the dialing task to achieve reasonable performance on both tasks. So what about natural breakpoints? With the model we can also predict which strategies interleave at the natural breakpoint only and which strategies interleave at other points. We found that people used the natural breakpoints only as cues. Whether they followed up on these cues and interleaved attention between tasks depended on the priorities. Overall, this research gives detailed insights about when people switch their attention between tasks. In general, we are flexible in how we interleave tasks. We make performance trade-offs, which can be revealed by considering performance in the context of other interleaving strategies. 
what strategies and what trade-off we settle on is influenced by the task structure and natural breakpoints, but it is also influenced by the priorities that we set. Having a model that predicted human performance was of particular value in this study, as it helped us understand what trade-offs people make and why they did not always settle on the overall safest way of dividing attention. The setting in which we studied is of course different from everyday driving. However, it does provide suggestions for why people sometimes take risks. They might not have their priorities right, or they might have an incorrect subjective feeling of efficiency. More details about this work can be found in these papers.